question you know, I have. Uh, one of the things that happens, you know, and that that was really the the next uh, sentiment I wanted to bring in and get your opinions on, and, and actually just hear what your feelings are on the subject. Is all right now. Somebody walks into one of your gyms uh, and starts going around and getting the training that you direct them for. And uh, they start having some success, maybe even make a little money or they already had a little money or they had somebody that wants to back them up. Um, they think they know it all, you know, just like you said, maybe. Uh, or they, they think they've, they're have they good enough and they've got the money for it and they, they're like, all right. They just roll on out, start their own gym, and all of a sudden, like you said, you know, I think that's kind of like what these popularity contests end up being. If somebody has done had some success, and again, Cool, maybe you know, cool person, uh, able to to spar well and, and bring in some killers and stuff like that. But if nobody's coaching that person, and that person isn't still at least going back to their lineage or some new spots, and again, like you said, an MMA coach has to know a really badass. Uh, usually, it's a Muay Thai guy or a kickboxing uh, specialist. Uh, shit, dude, when I interviewed Pat Militich, I asked him, I go, hi, how did you create so many world champions out of Militich fighting systems? And I know both of you guys definitely would respect Pat Militich and the way he coached, right? thousand percent. Okay. Um, he said, all right, if a guy came to my gym, wanted to be a mixed martial artist, wanted me to train him to do this, if he was a wrestler... I started putting him in kickboxing and kickboxing tournaments, boxing tournaments, bringing him in with boxers. I wasn't teaching him boxing. I taught him what I learned from fighting in, in, in the cage and in the ring and stuff. I would show him how I applied it to my routines and things, but I would send him and have him do almost strictly striking while keeping his wrestling sharp, you know, and then we'd introduce jujitsu, usually with the gi to start. And then he would take a process. And the people that stayed, Matt Hughes, I mean, there's there's a list of world champions that he produced that that worked. And when I heard that, that was the first time somebody broke it down for me, fellas, and that made fucking sense. That dude is well-spoken, very intelligent, awesome motherfucker, good friend of mine, by the way. We became good friends. We talk all the fucking time about politics and shit, you know what I mean? And it's like <laughs> that dude knew what he was talking yeah, I mean, about. Pat probably would have somebody... been a good example of somebody that I was, mm-hmm. you know, speaking on earlier. And you know what, a guy like Pat Militich, I don't know what his situation is, but he should be a multi-freaking millionaire for his what he's accomplished in mixed martial arts alone. Oh, you know God, what I mean? Absolutely. And absolutely. I don't even know if he runs in school now. You know no, what I mean? he sold it. I hope he does. He sold it. Yeah. He, you see? He, you know, and because people he trained rolled out and created some of their own gyms and took the people out of right. there, and he got – well, yeah, I want to I touch on something you said, Dave, about uh, people coming in and, and trying to, you know, finance your your top guys and uh, have them run off and start their own gym or whatever. Those guys, man, like the, 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 I feel bad for the the guy that they that they get influenced, you know, that gets influenced by these guys. These guys, in all reality, are just hangers on, succubuses, freaking demons. They are. They ruin good things that people have built, and they come in and. Then, they destroy everything you work hard, so hard for just because they had a little bit of money, you know. And, and a the lot thing of is they go on to, yeah, it's all on freaking ego. And then they influence these poor kids who don't have shit, you know, that probably would get to where they need to be going if they stayed with you, you know. And they can they ruin them, you know. And I've seen it time and time again. <clears throat> the only thing I want to touch on with the I I feel the flaw with Pat Milicic is. I feel is that let's say you do have a wrestler. I think it's important that you never neglect any aspect of the four basic elements of, of mixed martial arts. Oh, he made sure to, to tell me that I he think, kept I, them sharp. Sorry. I didn't want to correct I, you. I just think, yeah, he was. No, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just saying, I think yeah. it's important that, okay, I agree with that formula and that remedy. You need to bring up your, your weak point. People often neglect the weak points of their games because it's uncomfortable. And, in order to be a balanced fighter, that's what makes you more successful. It increases your chances of winning. I just think that when you are doing something along those lines, that I'm not saying neglect wrestling completely, <clears throat> but you need to focus 10% no. or 15% no. of your focus still staying sharp and not neglecting it either at the, at the same time. <coughs> that's all right. Yep. There's no learning out there. 
their ground craft or whatever they came with. You know what I mean? You had a couple guys that were boxers. But they would still work their craft, but, like, he would just take a year of making them do tournaments and, you know, do some golden gloves or kickboxing and stuff like that. But, no, he wasn't neglecting anything. I Because I asked him, I said, well, do you mean you didn't have a guy wrestle for a whole year? And he said, oh, no, no, man, we worked on everything still. Just I would make sure to bring them to someone else who was a better trainer than I was. And it just resonated when you guys were both talking. Uh, but, yeah, man, I, I don't mean to correct you, but, yeah, I asked him afterwards. No, I'm glad you did. What's that, homie? I'm, gl- I'm, gl- yeah. I'm glad that you did. You know shit. <laughs> I want to one of my things that, that, that one of my things as a coach, you know, it, as a, it, a fortunate, fortunately, I had learned the right way, and I had some good coaching, you know, with Mate and my jujitsu came from Master Kaiki Elias, who is a black belt under Elio Gracie, so pretty, pretty damn close to the source there, as far as you know, uh, the true jujitsu, you know, the real jujitsu, not what you know it's become lately, you know, so I was fortunate that way. And, you know, and I wrestled, you know, the good program through, you know, from seven years old all the way through high school and Davison, you know, the Davison wrestling program, which, you know, most people out there know Michigan wrestling will, will recognize, you know, so I have good basics in wrestling, boxing, you know, uh, jujitsu and Muay Thai. So I'm fortunate in that. And my students are fortunate in that, that that's what I focus on is the basics. And I bring in, just like, you know, James was talking about and you were talking about, I bring in other people who are maybe a little better than I am or have a different look than I do to supplement. Like, I'm not the only coach at my gym. You know, I have Ben Lagman there. I have uh, uh, Rob Ross, who's another jiu-jitsu guy, brown belt under me. Um, you know, uh, Joe Chapman is a Muay Thai coach. I have a lot of, you know, still work with Métis a lot you know, bringing them in for seminars and things like that. So I'm not the only coach at my gym. I can't take credit 100% for, for all my guys. And I got Bobby Nash teaching wrestling, you know. So I let these guys, you know, show their their strengths, you know. And I just teach, you know, mostly the basics. You know, in jiu-jitsu I could take a little bit farther, you know. But as far as Muay Thai goes and boxing goes and wrestling goes, I keep it really simple. And that's a, that's a recipe for success. Certainly. I mean, it just makes sense. And and when I see people learning the wrong basics, like we had started the conversation off now. So for anybody listening out there that that's an amateur and we get a lot of people that from all aspects of, of, of this sport, from fans to competitors and people that are professionals and uh, things like that. So as far as that goes, and uh, we'll go with James to start on this, you know, what are the things that somebody should look for and, and how do you find a way? I mean, cause you know, you can't get like, let's say a guy has a, a little MMA team somewhere. Right. And their, their intentions are good. They're not trying to fuck things up. They just want to do this and they kind of live in the middle of nowhere. Maybe there's 10 or 11 of them. Now, wouldn't it be better suited for someone like you guys who are, are the, the elder statesmen to put together some kind of a package where they can come down and get some real learning and you can kind of help them to at least start getting basics. Cause it seems to me like, you know, small groups of people, they, and of course they don't get to claim any names or anything like that, but let's say uh, somebody brings their team to, to your gym or comes down to Detroit and stays for a week and hooks you up with whatever it costs, or they get a sponsor to pay for it or somebody gets to fund it, however it works. Now, how much do you think that would do to help shore up and advance this product, which, I'm telling you, man, it's available every weekend somewhere. There's varying levels of it, and it really doesn't seem to be going away. So rather than figuring out a way to shut it down, which would involve a bunch of crooked politicians and shit and a lot of people that have the potential to get shit canned and lost, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, is there ways we can encourage people to come up with the cash to pay you for good instruction, at least starting with the basics so we don't have people getting too far into that bad learning, James? Well, I think that the problem is this. The training has to be consistent. It's like kind of going to the gym. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I think that. I, I yeah sorry. Um, I do think that the training needs to be consistent, but something is better than nothing. 
at least if you know a guy comes down and, and goes to Don's place, at least he can rep the arm bar a hundred times in during Don's class under his supervision, to where they can go back home and rep that. At least they're teaching something. Right. There might be a couple of details they might leave out. I'm sure they're not going to master it with doing 100 reps, but at least it's giving them some kind of base, some kind of foundation, which is better than nothing. Um, so I, I think that it's not enough, but it's certainly better than nothing. And, and you guys seem to be I'll more than willing to accommodate you. people with good intentions and things like that, you know, folks that really want to try to do this. And not everyone out there does have an ego, but the problem is, you get a couple wins, you get some confidence, and your guys' job is to build someone's confidence at the no. very least. <laughs> like, right? But you, I got to, I got to stop you right there, bro. I'm sorry. If they don't have an ego, then they're a fucking idiot. Because I'm not gonna go open a fucking mechanic shop and not know how to change fucking oil, or at least have enough fucking common sense to bring in someone mechanics that do know how to run a fucking mechanic shop. That's just Good common point. fucking sense, man. So no, you're a fucking There's idiot, no or you have an ego. One of the fucking two. There's no cookie cutting it. There's no other way around it. And I'm telling you right now, I respect about four coaches in this whole fucking state. The rest of you guys are fucking idiots, and you're just claiming well, and thinking like you're doing know, something like, based off like of give that name a kid's athleticism. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you at all. Put the names out there because people should know where they can go and where. At least, you know, where what we're talking about. And you guys, man, I would defer to you over anyone I talk to. If you guys tell me something, I know that it's true, especially as it pertains to things that happen in the gym, in the cage, the athletic aspects of it, the training, and everything like that. I defer 100%. So for you, and, and we'll pose this to Don, and it doesn't mean anything. Just be, be a man and please help anybody listening that wants to go get real training. You know, that if – if you hear these words and you're you fit this bill, you can change. You can fix this. You don't have to. You know, you might have potential. You might not have to stop, but you need to go somewhere with someone that really knows can fucking tell you the real truth and isn't afraid to tell you, hey man, you're fucking doing this wrong, or hey man, you might want to find something else to do with your time. Um, so who are those people, James? I'm gonna say this. Yeah, instead you, of me shitting on. Instead of me shitting on everybody that's not up to speed, I'm just going to put it to you like this. No one has produced more UFC veterans than Don and myself. You guys can figure the rest out for yourself. And I'm not saying everybody else is shit. A couple other people I do respect, and I respect the programs that they got going on. You know, I do, I do respect, you know, uh, Michigan top team. You know, uh, I've I've went to their practice. I've seen how they run, they structure things. Um, But uh, unfortunately, I'll be honest with you, I think that a lot of the guys uh, just want to go out there and fucking spar, and there's not enough technique, uh, you know, putting on a gi and things of that nature. Thank you. So, I mean, I think that's a weak point of their, of their game, and they need an MMA coach. You know, so um, it's kind of harder to, to be a fighter and a coach at the same time. It is difficult. I've done it firsthand. So instead of me shitting on saying, this coach sucks, that coach sucks, you're a piece of shit, you're a fag, da 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 I'm saying Don and I have produced more UFC veterans than anyone else. It's not arguable who's the best coaches. I'm, I'm riding our own dicks and beating on our own chest, and that's just how the fuck it is. So you can't yeah. see the facts. Yeah. And the facts are the fucking facts. Deal with it. And I'm not even looking to pick up anybody new. Go see fucking Don Richard. You want to be the best fighter in Michigan? Don Richard, go see Don Richard. I don't want to fuck with these guys. They're unloyal, fucking backstabbing. This is how, this is how I'm going to break this down. 99% of these guys come into a gym, it's a fad to them, they just want to go get pussy at the fucking local club wearing a fucking tap out shirt, saying, lying, saying they fight UFC, okay? That's one. They won't last more than three months. So that's 99% of people don't ever come back if they get their ass kicked and they're not as tough because they knocked out a couple fucking drunk idiots at a bar, they found they're not that tough. Or they wrestled in high school and made state championships and they think they're a fucking monster and they could do this. Those guys usually don't even come back, 99% of the people. Then the people that do stick around don't last more than a few years. Okay, they tried it out, you know, they got a job, they got a girl pregnant, I got a family, I got a job, I, I ain't got time for that shit. They fade off. Then 90% of those guys aren't going to make it to the fucking UFC that do stick it out. And then 99% that do make it to the UFC, of that 99%, of that 99% are going to fuck you over and go fucking with somebody else anyway. So what the fuck, if I'm not getting respected and I'm not making money on this stuff and getting my accolades because goddamn knows I would love to be able to be a Greg Jackson and just do this full-time, and just coach fighters, 
I'd like to make a couple million dollars a year just coaching fighters. But unfortunately, I keep producing. If you keep producing people and they keep leaving you, then you don't ever get your just do your accolades as a fucking coach, and you get no recognition. You get no recognition, then you don't become that prominent coaching force out there where people flock to you. Because if everybody stays in the same camp, you have a dynamic base to have other, attract other fighters from all over the world to come and set up shop with you, and then all of a sudden now you're the man hailed as the man, and it would be justified if you were producing people from the ground floor up uh, as a coach. I'm not going to give people accolades and respect of taking fucking guys on. They're already established and claiming, them, claiming the other coaches work. I'm not doing that. That's bullshit. So with that being said, to go back to circle back around where we came from, you want to be the man, go see Don. That's that's where you guys need to be at Fuse MMA. I'm and they're welcome. Well and the, and well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, I hope you guys understand. And Don understands my percentage process of the percentage of the percentage of this to this to this to this to this to transition all the way to the top. And if I don't want to fucking do this to get somebody to fucking Bellator or or the UFC and then say, okay, fuck you, take care, thanks. When I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna go through thousands of guys to get to that point, and then to come up short. It's fucking depressing and it's, it's aggravating, dude. I don't even want to fucking deal with it. So I have a few guys that I'll fuck with, and I don't care if they ever make it to the UFC or they ever do anything. They're good guys. I'm gonna go ahead and help them out with a career. I don't care if they just win uh, a King of the Cage title or you know a smaller show title. I don't care. They're good guys, and I just want to see them do the best they can do with their career. And I'm leaving it at that. I'm not. I don't want to fuck yeah, with these guys. Point. So I pose that to Don, too. Why don't you go ahead and extrapolate on that? There's a lot of good stuff in there, and I'm sure there's plenty that you can uh, pick up. But, again, go ahead, please. You know, I was going to say, you know, as far as coaches go, obviously, you know, I have, you know, utmost respect for James. And I was, you know, if they can get me to train, I would send them to James. I'm not going to put anybody on blast, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to promote anybody else other than myself. I'm just done with it. Like, if you want to train, you want to learn, you want to get as far as you can in this game, come see me. I haven't gave up yet. I'm about a eyelash away. Right now, <laughs> I, have solid, I have a great, solid core group of guys that could really, I mean, I really have about four or five, maybe six guys that could really do something in this sport if they stick with me. What they do from here is going to be up to them. If they stick with me, I'll take them to the top. I have a good staff around me. I've still got love and passion for the sport, and I have a lot of love and passion for the guys that I'm talking about. And if you guys are out there listening, I'm doing this for you guys at this point. If I lose these guys, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done losing guys. I'm done getting heartbroken over this shit. I'm tired of it. You know, I'll just teach little kids. I have more fun teaching the five-year-old little kids than I do some of these MMA fighters. And I'm not talking about the guys I have right now. The guys I have right now, I love them to death. They're out there killing it. They listen to me. You know, they're doing big things, and, you know, they're giving me props for it. But if I lose this group of guys, I'm done. I'm walking away, man. I'm 41 years old now. My body's broken, and I have a good job. At this point, I'm ready to walk away, but I'm sticking in there for these guys I have right now. And as far as coaches go, I'm not going to give any other MMA teams props or tuck them down. I'm just going to give pro props to some coaches out there. Carol Rowe, Métis, J.D. Peacock, the jiu-jitsu coaches at Warrior Way, everybody else, sorry. I got love for a lot of people, um, but those are the best people that I can think of off the top of my head that I have experience with. Carol Rowe, Métis, the jiu-jitsu guys at Warrior Way. I'll give Dave Gomez some props. After that, you know, I got nothing negative or positive to say about anybody. You know, I got some friends out there like Dan Kuzno, I'll give some love to. You know, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be in the sport. But he doesn't really train MMA fighters anymore. So he left. if you want to learn some good jiu jitsu when you're in the Lapeer area, go out and see Dan Kuzno. You know, and so I guess uh, schools, another yeah, okay. MMA. It's worth a try. Now, uh, I don't know if you got us on speaker or not, or if you can get closer to the receiver, but you're starting to just barely cut out a little bit on me here, Don. But um, another. Uh, oh, okay, sorry about question. that. Sounds good. Oh, perfect. I did have another question. Um, give me just a second here, because it was good too sure. uh, along these lines. Now, what happens when? And let's. I'm not talking about you know some. Maybe there is some people out there that are studying or that have something going on. Now, what happens when somebody? 
from another area finally does bring forth some UFC fighters. Because we did have a, a Grand Rapids fighter, uh, a guy that started, he's actually the Motown phenom. Kevin Lee's doing pretty well in the lightweight division. And he brought a guy from California that set up shop in Grand Rapids. And we started training some wrestlers and giving them some different looks and stuff. I'm not trying to give any names or any props out, but I will give the fighter props because he, he has put it together and done well in the UFC. Now, what happens when people start producing uh, some talent and these guys start winning? Uh, we might start seeing it. I'm not trying to predict it or say that anybody's credible either. But when that does start to happen, is that when you guys might open up and go, all right, hey, man, there's some people over here doing it now. This guy's lineage uh, comes from this, comes from that, and he's got a little team. Uh, somebody moved here. Uh, they started out with a, a group of high school wrestlers because that's mostly what we have over here on the west side of the state, bro. I, there was right. like sort sort of a karate program in the Gaylord area that was pretty decent. These guys that came in and they started, uh, they were also high school wrestlers, so they had some decent success, but they never really – uh, found some of them went to Detroit and got good, but you know what I mean. It was basically what we have over here as high school wrestlers, and now what we're seeing from the Grand Rapids and the Skeegan area is there's a boat, uh, and not the car ferry that's slow ass shit. There's a there's an express boat, and then there's some pretty easy ways to get over to Duke Rufus's camp. And so now you're going to start seeing some decent competitors with the wrestling base go over to these kickboxing uh, and MMA schools. Uh, that are trying to compete, and their main focus is trying to get on the, your guys' level because East versus West is just makes yeah. sense here. It's a beautiful thing. We, yeah. We've yeah. got a lot of catching up to do, and this is for them. Dave, bro. I this welcome it. I welcome it because we need guys for my guys to fight. You know, me and James, I think, are more referring to especially Southeast Michigan. You know, the West Side, yeah. you know, I don't know really much you know, about Kevin until he got into the UFC, but I give the kid props. He's out there killing it. You know, he's representing Detroit. You know, Absolutely. that's awesome. But he didn't come through in the southeast Michigan area, you know, and for the longest time, you know, they're not, like you said, they're catching up and they're bringing some people in. And that's great as long as they're doing it the right way and they know what they're doing. You know, what we're seeing here on the southeast part of Michigan is – it, like James said, they're making a mockery, you know, and it, it's ridiculous. You know, hopefully the West Side can avoid some of that garbage that's going on here. You know, like James well, was saying, crabs in a barrel. The Harlem Globetrotters always think. had to play the Washington team there, and now these, you're seeing these Washington teams pop up. And they're just feeders, and once in a while, you have, like James said, an athlete that wins on athleticism, but this coach all of a sudden – these local people that don't know any better and haven't met you guys yet or seen the, the history, uh, they you know start going, wow, this guy's really good. Go ahead. I just, I just thought of a very valid point that we might have missed, and this could attribute to it. Honestly, I think Northern Michigan is, is, is the worst enemy in the state. I'm sorry. I've, I've repped a lot of shows up there, and it's it's horrible. Fucking absolutely horrible. Um, not saying there's not athletes there. I'm just saying the coaching, I've never seen such horrible coaching in my life. Um, the shit that I hear these coaches come out of their mouth, you can't even do half the moves. They even say a move they can do from the position that they're even in. Nor do 90 sometimes they even say a valid move to do to get out of a bad situation. Um, I hear squeeze them, choke them, get them. But that's what I hear as far as the coaching. Get them up off you. Yeah, get them up off you. So, anyway, um, but the thing is this. With it being scattered out there, there's no coaches. Nobody's out there uh, uh, doing anything. So, what do you what do you do if you're a guy? Say you live in fucking in your town, Dave. Where the fuck do you go? If you got a job, a family, and everything else, and you love the sport and you want to do it, you can't come down here. You can't drive fucking. That's four why hours. I'm a ring announcer. I have a longer shelf life, and I just have to get to the events. Right. I practice. I practice in my garage, and it's okay because I got a mirror. I put my suit on and turn the PA on, and I re-announce fights that I've already done. <laughs> but, but, but my, my point being is this: we can't beat up on I certain wouldn't guys. Know. We, we can't beat up on certain guys because what do you, the fuck do you is a guy supposed to do if he's in that situation? You know, hey, I'm a, I, I got my family business. Look at Chad Herrick. You know, he lives way the fuck out in Tawas. There's nobody in Tawas from the fucking to, to teach him anything. The guy can't leave his fucking business. He can't come down consistently to train, but he loves he loves the fucking sport. 
I mean, in those kind of situations, you have no choice but to go to a fucking garage team, the local fucking guys, and just try and get what you can out of it because you want to do whatever you can do because you love the sport. So that, to, and look how well he's done. That, well, I'm not saying that's well a could sad be. situation. <clears throat> yeah. Could Imagine have, you got a guy like... That. Yeah, you got a guy like you know Chad Herrick that has some really solid formal training on a consistent basis. That guy's a fucking monster. Now, if he had you know consistent training, I mean, you know, he's definitely uh, he could be anybody on any given day. You know, uh, so he can go to some tough guys like Joe Dorkson and things of that nature. But my point being is, I'm Dorkson. beating up on guys. <laughs> I'm, we're, we're beating up on guys um, who might be stuck in a situation like that, and it might not be their fault 100 percent because of a situation like that. You know what I mean? Well, now, what about Vance? Vance is in Cadillac, and he's taken some people to a certain level. But, again, I think he even – him and I have talked about this before, and he's like, you know, if he gets a phenom, he pretty much has to deliver them down there because otherwise they're just not going to get the look they need, right? And and I give Vance credit. He really does try to send people – I know he's tried to send people my way. You know, he's actually sent – I had one person come in, unfortunately – you know, the fault lies a lot of times with these quote unquote fighters not following through, not putting in the work, not doing what they're saying they're going to do. You know, Vance sent one to me, um, and I'm trying not to use a gender or anything because it'll give away maybe who it is. But I would say she, he sent a person to me who trained a couple times, fell off the map, never heard from him again. You know, and then they end up having a couple more fights, and then poof, gone. You know, well, that's what uh, that person needed, though, right? Sacrifice anything. What's that? That's what that's what that person needed then, and their coach, in a, in a sense, like let's say if that was, we'll use Vance as an example. We'll make this a hypothetical for you, so you're not uncomfortable. Um, you know, Vance said, "All right, I got somebody that's pretty damn good. They're winning some fights. I've taken them to other states. They've done well against competition." Uh, I've done what I can do. Uh, they need to start coming to see you and still working with me since they live here, but let's incorporate what you've got, right? Now, right. that person goes down to your gym. That's the first time they might see, you know, uh, a bunch of competition and some, some real uh, serious execution, and that might show them, holy shit, it might scare the fuck out of them to the point where that coach being right. advanced in this, hypothetical situation has done his job by saying, all right, let's right. see what you got. Well, they didn't have it. And that's okay too. You know, we're not saying you're a fucko if you don't have it, but we're not, we're saying, here's the real problem, Dave. Mm-hmm. 99 times out of a hundred or 99.99% of the time, these fighters just won't do it. They won't come down. Not even one time. I've had relationships, you know, uh, that I've built over the years going and doing seminars and working with some fighters and I have an open door policy and these guys, you know, I, they, they've been invited and invited. They want me to corner them and all this stuff and you invite them down. They just never come train. They'll never come down. You can go to them, but they won't come to you. What they don't understand is that they're on the wrong side of the coin. You know, you want me to come to you, you're going to pay for it. You know, and I'm tired of, I'm tired personally oh. of selling myself short. You know, you I've, I mean, I've, been, I've tried to do everything. We talked about seminars earlier. $25 a person. These people don't bring us up or they do it a couple times and then, you know, you never hear from them again. You know, it's, and then or no they do set it up there. and then nobody shows up. James and I had a seminar set up, uh, I think, last year for him yeah. and I both to do. They canceled it, and then they never rescheduled. These guys want to be yeah. heroes in their own hometown, but they don't realize there's a bigger picture. They could be a hero on a national level if they just suck up their pride and their ego and do what it takes, make the sacrifices that it takes to, to get the training that they need to be truly successful, and they won't do it. And that's a beautiful thing I got to compliment uh, Don, too. And I couldn't ask to be in the corner with a better person because anything that I'm getting ready to say, Don will beat me to the punch to say it. So all I have to do is just reinforce what Don is saying, working a corner with the guy. You know what I mean? 
I've been in corners where like a guy's like, "Hey, uh, you mind if so and so corner?" Yeah, I do mind if so and so corner because they're saying something fucking retarded. I, I'm gonna fight an all American wrestler. I'm gonna start leg kicking him off the fucking rip, but I don't want to go to the ground with the guy. No, keep your fucking feet on the ground for the first round and get him a little wore out, then go to work on his legs. You know, whatever. But I'm just saying, like the strategy wise and common sense, it was just very refreshing to have a competent corner, a team that is on the same page in regards to knowledge and stuff like that. I see often a lot of times with cornermen not being on the same page. One corner yelling, get uh, stand up. The other guy saying, no, pull a guard. The other guy saying, you know, this is a fucking shit show. And I feel bad for these fucking fighters because they're just sitting like, well, what the fuck do I do? You know, these guys are so unorganized. And, 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 and like I said, they're, they're not coach. If you're not at least a fucking – Don, you correct me if you, if you think I disagree with me, but if you're not at least – a purple belt in a, a credible jiu-jitsu system putting on a gi, you should not be teaching any grappling at all. If you've had no formal boxing training, you should not, by a credible boxing coach, you should not be teaching boxing. Same thing with Muay Thai. Same thing with wrestling. This is how it is. Oh, my wrestling yeah, coach. I mean, for the most part, I'm pretty... pretty- I pretty much agree, you know, but there's those situations like we talked about earlier where you're out in the middle of a bumfuck and you don't have an option, you know, but there is options out there, not YouTube options, but there are options online for credible online training where you can, you know, and the people need to make the sacrifices, though, buy a plane ticket, buy a bus ticket, get a ride, drive to places that have credibility to you know, have someone to oversee them and overlook them. You know, you know so there's like you're, you're, Gracie University right, online. I know Duke Rufus has a thing online, you know, and they can get some great information from those things, but you've got to be willing to make the sacrifices to get, hey, Don, to get in front of somebody. You're, you're, you're right, Don, because you know what, dude? I take that back. Now that you brought up a very good point. These guys that are stuck in fucking in the middle of, like, say, Benzie County or whatever the hell, call Don Richard up and have him come to a fucking seminar. Call me up. Have me come to a seminar. At least every quarter, and, and, every and two months. You have the whole resources. thing is, is I make myself accessible. I don't charge excessive amounts of money. Pay me what I'm worth. Make it worth my time, and I'll be there. You know? I, I, I recently had a guy hit me up on Facebook. And, you know, I, how many guys expect to be trained for free? Listen, motherfucker, I paid for the fucking knowledge. I still pay people money. Kara is one of my best friends. You know, she will not take a dime from me. But you know what I'll do? I'll run over, stick fucking money in her bag any fucking way. Because I respect the fucking... If I ask... If, you know, if, if someone's teaching me on a consistent basis, I'm not going to expect anybody, even a friend, to do something for me consistently, okay? Unless I'm doing something back consistently for them. It's, it's a matter of respect. That Don has bled, been punched, kicked, bled every orifice of his body to get the knowledge and paid for it out of his own pocket... Um, to get where he's at, you should reciprocate and pay that man for his knowledge. It's got to it's got to come full turn. It's got to come full cycle, man. It's just very. Yeah, I'll just take it one step farther, dude. This is how how uh, generous that I am. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, if you drive a great distance to come train with me at my school, I don't need to charge you. You know, well, I charge you ten dollars for a dropping fee. You know, if you're coming consistently. You know what I mean? Like, it's so accessible. These guys are just not willing to put in the work or to humble themselves enough to be taught. You know, I see it time and time and time again. Here's an idea. For all these fucking sponsors out there and people that want to say they sponsor shit and they give money to fucking promoters that, you know, don't give it back or they give it to this guy and that guy, if you really want to make somebody a better fighter and sponsor them, put up the money for them to go see one of these guys. Sponsor my gym so I can keep my doors open. Because we all know he's going to make fighters. they got the money. They don't pay me. Yeah. Instead of sponsoring his fighters, well, sponsor the gym. I mean, for like these northern Michigan businesses, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple of them that say they sponsor fighters and they don't really pay for them to go fucking uh, train anywhere. They just, they just pay them. They just give them well, shit. That's the thing. You know I mean, it's like, it's, well, hey, it's, it's, make it's them more, better. It's more... Butcher, it's more efficient to have, instead of bringing a whole fucking team down to train with Don or me or something like that, it's just much smarter to bring one of us up. It's a lot less inexpensive to have pay for, cover yeah. Don's gas and, and, and 
He'll come a check for you know for, for whatever he's asking. It's, it's just more efficient. And if you're out there, <laughs> if you're out there looking for a sponsor for you guys listening that don't really know what you're looking to do, or, or you know you've had some decent fights and you got some potential and you want to figure out how to get better. You know, when 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 you're looking for somebody to help you, I mean, it, it makes sense to me. If you're an amateur, you know, I'm strictly speaking to these guys that are just trying to get better and want to do this. You know, if you found out this is something you want to do and you feel like you want to figure out how good you are, because that's really what this is about. Everybody will tell you that does this at any level. You're constantly challenging yourself to see how good you are, how much you've learned, how good your team is, how well you've uh, grown since the last time, how much you were to put into this training camp, you know, any number of things. It's a growth process. And if you're willing to start that, if somebody's talking to you about money, say, look, I want to, I want to bring up, I mean, I got a team of guys here that I work with. They're, they're trying to help me get better. I want them to get better. I want to bring up Don Richard and James Lee or both of them to spend a weekend up here and we'll take them fishing and do what they want to do. You know, make it, make a little bit of a vacation out of it. So you can experience a new area of Michigan that way you're giving back to each other in ways more than just monetary. You know, you get to experience what it's like to a different area. You know, like if you came to Benzie County, dude, I'd show you some cool ass shit. You can meet my chicken. Uh, but you know, uh, can you hook me? Can you hook me with hot hook? Can you hook me up with hot hookers, butcher? Well, you know, you can hook yourself up. Uh, I can show you where the holes are at. The rest is up to you. Come on, there's no holes in Benzie County, butcher. Come on now. You really need a corner man for that, bro. You I really do. need a corner man for that. Uh, when it's well, scarce, I got to know what the watering holes are up there, man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's simple. That part's easy. But, but but again, you know, this is something. I hope you guys are listening. I know that when this gets publicized and put out there, as you know, just a way for people to get get some more knowledge. You know, give these guys a call. Hook it up. You know, it's not expensive, and it'll really. Here's the deal. If you want to look good to everybody, if you want to get some pussy, why don't you get better at the fucking sport and call these guys? Go get better. You'll learn a lot about yourself. Even if you go at it for the wrong reasons, these motherfuckers will beat those wrong reasons out of you, and not excessively, unless they need to or unless you're whatever. But, I mean, it's not like you're going down there and someone's going to be an asshole to you. It's just, look, you're going to get beat up in this sport, and if you learn how to deal with this, they're not going to fuck you up. You're not going to die doing this shit. You're going to learn. You're going to get better. You're going to get humbled. And that's what a lot of people need. Here's the thing. Even if you're not a fucker. Like, on that note, on that note, Dave, we were talking earlier, and we talked a little bit about it by about another gym uh, here local. Um, the way that we train is a lot of people don't understand. I the way I train fighters is special. I do it different than a lot of other people. When you come to my gym, you're not just getting beat up. That's not what we do, right? Exactly. We, we spar and we roll and we go hard, but. We train safe. We train uh, with respect for one another. The fact that that we have to come back and do this again tomorrow. Um, you come to my gym, you're more likely not going to get knocked out unless you're being an asshole. You know what I mean? Unless you're swinging for the fences. But our guys that spar together every day, we're sparring with, with technique and timing and, and with respect for one another and with no egos as much as it is possible. You know, it's very rare that you see a couple of my guys getting into a slugging match with one another. Usually if that happens, it's because somebody's ego got out of control. To somebody coming from improper training, they might feel like they got their ass kicked if they go in there somewhere where people are training with technique, even though it's respectful, right? That's the most (laughs) humbling way to get your ass kicked. Like, people are always like, oh, my God, he's scary. I'm the easiest one to go with because I will – beat you up in the most gentle way you've ever been beaten up, and you're <laughs> going to be amazed. You know what I mean? Because I have so much control, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been, had the experience, you know? And, uh, you know, the problem right. is people don't like that kind of humbling. All right, I'm 135 pounds with a loud mouth and a brash personality. I drive from Beulah and bring you, you know, whatever you require to, to show me the day of whatever it would take. Like, I'm coming with no background. I, well, I have some prison fights in my background, so I have some close quarters uh, kind of fighting for your life type shit that I've done, but that's really it. I've never fought outside of that because, again, being a loudmouth, my friends are always bigger than me, and if someone fucked with me, they'd, they'd have hell to pay, you know? And, and But let's say I did that, you know, and I'm not saying I won't. 
but I show up at your gym, uh, what would you do? You know, how would you deal with somebody like that? Uh, you know, that's maybe a little bit older than somebody that uh, is brash and coming off some state championships in wrestling or division one wrestling and even more uh, ego involved there possibly, you know, potential for ego. You know, somebody like me, uh, I walk in there. How, how would that go, you know, at, with you? You know, I'm 135 pounds. I pay you for a session. What do you teach me on day one? Day one, you got to get fucked in the every... shower, butcher, to get you back to your, your roots of being in prison. <laughs> What's you got to get gang raped in the fucking, you you get gang raped in the fucking shower first to get you back to your prison roots, and then we go from there. You build from there. Well, how are you going to teach the thing, me from butcher. the infirmary? <laughs> Here's the thing, Butcher. I have been doing this so long that I have a system, right? I teach everybody the same way. The little kids to the adults in jiu-jitsu, the first things they learn is all the same. Basically, it's maintaining, keeping, controlling the distance, okay, in a, in a fight, right? There's ranges in a fight, okay? Like in jiu-jitsu, we have uh, green and red zones, okay? So if you're you're far away from the person, it's green. If you're within punching range, it's red. If you're close to them in the clinch, it's green. Okay? So they all learn how to control the range in a fight. Okay? And how to use grappling as a self-defense. So jiu-jitsu in particular as self-defense. Right? So you're going to learn how to defend against somebody throwing a haymaker at you, somebody throwing a one-two at you, somebody trying to kick you, someone trying to grab you in a headlock, somebody trying to grab you in a guillotine, how to escape the mount, how to you know, use the guard defending punches, how to defend punches from the mountain escape. You know, everybody learns the same way. You know, that's why my mixed martial arts fighters are the most successful guys. They learn self-defense. It's the way that Elio Gracie meant you just to be taught. Simple. If you, want, if you want to argue with Helio's process, then you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> I agree with that. You know, I mean, is Elio's process... Bad. Is Elio's process of jiu-jitsu necessarily the way to win a gold medal at the IBJJF Worlds by itself? Maybe not. Not saying you're not going to be able to do that with me because that's not all I teach, but if you're a beginner coming to my school, you're going to learn Elio Gracie style of jiu-jitsu, period. And it doesn't mean do we're going to be pulling guard and flopping on our back. Do I have to wear a cup for grappling and shit? Do I have to wear a cup for that? No. No. It's your choice. It's like a boner. To. I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> that's on you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, no. Uh, so, all right. So but in all seriousness, I mean, in a shower, you wouldn't even need a key for your first class. I don't need a key to teach you self defense. You know, the key represents clothing that that anyone can wear in the streets, especially uh, here in Michigan, right? And then for the MMA fighters, the key is like resistance training for grappling. You understand what I'm saying? So if you can get out of yeah. an armbar with a gi on, you can get out of a triangle choke with a gi on, you can escape collar chokes. Somebody in no gi, it's going to be easy. You guys are, you know, I know James is familiar, but Dave, you're familiar with Abu Dhabi, the ADCC? Yes. The World Championships for Submission Grappling? Mm-hmm. Okay, so yes. this year, they just had the, the, the ADCC. All the guys who won, this is a no gi tournament, by the way, were all gi world champions. Yeah. You know, look at a lot of these MMA fighters that were champions in the UFC, George St. Pierre, Fabricio Verdun. The list goes on and on and on. BJ Penn, all key jiu-jitsu guys that were taught the right way. You know, Benson Henderson. So the gi is an important okay. training tool. You always got to wear it? No. But you should, you know, be wearing it on a weekly basis. What do you do on Thursdays? I'm coming back down there November 13th. Thursday we have uh, Jiu-Jitsu at uh, six, six, or, I'm sorry, 6 o'clock. Um, yeah, I mean, every class we cater to the lowest person in class. So if you come into our advanced Jiu-Jitsu class and you're a brand new guy and that was the only day you can make it, we're going to cater to that class to you if you're the newest guy. So you're going to be learning self-defense, how to escape them out, all the basics things in jiu-jitsu that you should be learning. You're not going to be learning barrel bolo and spinning upside down on your head, flopping to your back, you know, all these things that will get you killed in the street fight. You know, you're going to learn solid basic jiu-jitsu. 
you know, now if I have a room full of guys who are preparing for the next tournament coming up, we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to do more sport specific type jiu-jitsu. So that's what they're there for. You know what I mean? So we train what we train for what we have coming up as a team. So we got MMA fights coming up. Okay, we're MMA geared in our classes. We got a jiu-jitsu tournament coming up. Okay, so we're jiu-jitsu geared in our jiu-jitsu classes. You know, for sport jiu-jitsu. You know, so everybody gets what they want. You know, what they're looking for. Well, let me put this in my GPS, dude. I'll show up for a beginner class if I get to. And then uh, after that, we got uh, Ben Lang Muay Thai class. And Ben is a lot of fun, man. He's intense, but he's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I've known him for quite a while, too. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll right? do that. Yeah, I got way to love that Thursday, so if I can get done earlier, or maybe on the, during the day, for, I, have to, I have to announce Friday, so I can, definitely ain't going to do any striking classes. But I'd like to do a beginner class just to see what it's like, what the first day would be like. Because I've, I've always wondered, you know, I've thought about going to some local gyms before, and again, I don't disrespect anyone. I don't know any better anyway. But when I talk, when I met guys like you, and you know, when I started becoming good friends with James, and I've met you several times over the years, and it's always been a great time, Don, and you know, other people butcher, that have we're, been a, we're, we're yeah. acquaintances, Butcher. We're, we're acquaintances. We're not friends, okay? Just make no difference from here. <laughs> well, why do we shower together and shit? <laughs> Well, Dave, you know, you're more than welcome any time you could ever be in, you know, so open door to your brother, and, you know, if there's no class going on, man, I'll come meet you at the gym myself if I can, and if I can't do it, I'll get one of my guys to come work with you, so. Yeah, because I've never done That's how we roll, ever. man. We're, it's, yeah, you know, I've been pretty one. fired up tonight, and, and it, I've been pretty fired up tonight, and if you don't know me and you see me at the fights, you might think I'm a mean guy, man, but, you know. That's the whole thing. I'm speaking from the heart. You know, I got a lot of passion for this sport, and, and I know James does too. It just kills us to see what's going on these days, man. And, you know, hopefully by anybody hearing me go off and James go off, we can start to make a difference and maybe enlighten these guys a little bit and educate them, you know. That's why we're here. And, uh, well, I was always under the impression that, you know, I heard like, you know, you should hear these sayings growing up, and one of those sayings that I always heard is if you're, if you truly are great, you don't have to tell everyone, everyone else to do it for you. Problem is they're here in Michigan is nobody gives anybody props. You know? Honestly, Don, and it's, they don't it's, get props where it's due. They they want to they, they like want to boost that, themselves dude. up before they'll boost up someone else. You know what I mean? Go ahead, James. Don, it's bigger than that, bro. People are too fucking dumb to do their due diligence and learn the history of the sport, who's produced who, who's performed. They don't. They're lazy. They just say, "Oh, there's an MMA gym." It's not a matter of giving a, you props, me props, whoever you guys who laid the foundation for these guys. They're just too fucking lazy and dumb. Yeah, I guess that maybe is better. I don't know. <laughs> maybe giving people too much credit for their intelligence. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, what I'm, I'm not... That's what separates an excellent or an outstanding or you know a competitor from somebody that maybe just thinks they want to do it and figures out that they can't, you know, that's very possible, you know, in anything. I mean, a lot of people want to be pro baseball players. I did. I even got all conference and I got all state honorable mention because Derek Jeter was playing my position that year. And I, I still didn't do shit. I didn't play any pro baseball and I was close enough, dude, you know? And, and so it's okay if you go find out you can't do this, but here's the deal. Go find out from somebody that's real and, and figure it out on your own. Don't act like you are Jer Derek Jeter in Beulah or Traverse City or Gaylord. And then if you actually went somewhere and, and rolled or tried out a light spar, you'd feel like, holy shit, uh, I'm actually, I actually don't know anything. You know, that might be good for you. you know, go figure this out. Um, you know, and he, here's another thing, you know, this isn't a tough man contest. You know, I understand that a lot of, outfits are run that way and sure there's undercards full of people that are trying this out for the first time and maybe haven't trained at all but if you find the people at those events it's not hard to do if they're there if they're not there you might want to consider a different event but when you find somebody like james or don or somebody that's cornering someone and you see that they're actually doing all this shit right go ask some fucking questions don't be a pussy because you're obviously not scared enough to get in there and let the door get locked 
wouldn't you want the right tools? You know, and, and, uh, and no. you know, but, you know, do you take guys to jiu-jitsu tournaments? I know that there's like a Michigan Open coming up in October. There's now a submission-only tournament going on in the center of the state. Uh, what are you doing with that? Let's move on. Sorry. Yeah, I, uh, you know, Michigan Open is our home tournament. It's in Taiki, uh, oh. home tournament. So, you know, I'll definitely, you know, get as many guys from Fuse there as possible. You know, and, and this is the thing, too. You know, a lot of the, the demographic, here's the problem. is the dem- demographic that we're going for. I'm looking for 13-year-olds to freaking 25-year-olds, let's say. These kids just don't have money. So it's hard to get them or get their parents to pay for these kids, do these tournaments and stuff. You know, so it's you know, I try to get these kids to save up their money, get you know, to to you know, and I try to get them sponsorships. And it's just an uphill battle and we try really hard to you guys and to make things happen for them. But ultimately, you know, some of the burden has to be on them, you know, if they want it bad enough, they gotta sacrifice, they gotta do the things, you know, in order to get themselves where they need to be. You know, so we we you know I got a, definitely got a bunch of guys doing Michigan Open, and I try to get them into as many tournaments and kickboxing matches, and just like we're talking about with Pat Militich, you know, I try to get them to do all these things that they should be doing in order to prepare them properly, you know, and you know competing is not for everyone either. I have a lot of average Joes in my school that have no interest in competing. You know, they're just there to have fun and learn self defense, and they get what they they need to. But at the same time, I don't neglect my my competitors. You know, so, um, you know, I'll definitely, you know, this tournament, the Michigan Open, there should be 500 competitors out uh, this year. So, um, it's big for Michigan Jiu-Jitsu. Yes, it is. All levels, too. Yep. Uh, okay. Real, real quick, but back to Greg Jackson's ass. And I, I'm not yeah. mad at Greg. <laughs> I touched the nerve there. Maybe I was a bad example. No. <laughs> <laughs> back to him. Back, I just want you to get an understanding of my, my mentality of why I kind of singled him out. It was because I was in Indianapolis at the UFC. I was in Albuquerque before that. Called Greg a couple of times. Like Greg and I coached up. We built up to the ranks, king of the cage, coaching guys, you know, this, that, and the other. So um, anyway, I called this guy I'm in Albuquerque. I'm going to return calls. This and the other blows me off and then returns my calls. Okay. I can see him in, in the Indianapolis. Hey, yo, Greg, the fuck, man? I called you a few times. I want to come train at your gym. You never call me back, man. What's up with that? Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm busy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, here is my personal cell phone number. He looks around like there's fucking paparazzi hiding in fucking windows to overhear him give me his cell phone number, okay? And he says, please, whatever you do, don't give it to anybody. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt or some fucking buddy? Like, Somebody wants your fucking phone number, your, your cell phone number, bro? Are you fucking kidding me? Who, yeah. who did you become, man? Who the fuck did you become? And the ego that came with, um, the, the ego doesn't justify the work. So meaning you develop one guy and then the popularity becomes a contest there. Don't get all big-headed in Hollywood awesome shit that you didn't really fucking do behind the hype. Do you, you know what I mean? That's the problem I, I had with the situation with the guy's ego on top of it. Do you know what I mean? Big time. Yeah. Um, you know, here's a question. I'm confused about something and, and because I don't, I don't care if this strikes a chord because it's something that needs to be known because this guy's got a lot of fans and he, he did pretty well in UFC for a minute. But what is jury jujitsu? Is that a, something based off of something you guys have going on at <laughs> Is it, All right. Uh, well, you, know, you, you guys, hold on. Okay. Whatever anybody well, tells me that they're studying. I'm never, whoops, sorry. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. Well, let me finish. Oh, ahead, I, yeah, finish. Finish. I wanted to lay yeah. the groundwork for this. Because whenever I ask people questions about, you know, what kind of jiu-jitsu they study, I hear Machado. I'll hear some 10th Planet come from some successful competitors here and there. I'll hear Helio Gracie. I'll hear a couple different styles of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. I'll hear Kaique. Um, honestly, I've heard both of your names before come from successful athletes that I've interviewed on previous shows that other people had. Like if there was a producer giving me all these interviews, I didn't choose them. And they had some guys come on that referenced you guys. And people from overseas, when I mention, whenever I want a name drop, bro, I, I say Don Richard or James Lee. I don't go farther. I don't ever. I don't. I mean, once in a while, Dan Severn, but rarely because 
most people look at me funny when I bring him up. No, no offense to you, sir, but he's kind of a Ned Flanders. But so, <laughs> what is jury jujitsu? Why are we getting further confused here? Because all of a sudden, there's just a whole shitload of different stuff. Is that Kai Jujitsu okay. with a new well, name? I'll, Sorry. Go ahead. I'll chime in on this. Miles, dude. Um, Get close to your phone again. It's just a, it's just a play on his name. Okay, essentially what Jerry Jiu-Jitsu is, is Miles' brand of MMA. But he uses the Jiu-Jitsu part as a play on his name with the jury. So it makes like JJJ. You know what I mean? So that's really all that is. Miles' Jiu-Jitsu is Kaiki Elias, Big Don Richard Jiu-Jitsu, and he'll be the first to admit it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, he, he gave you props. I wasn't trying to start no shit. I just was wondering because I want yeah. people to know that. I don't. I don't want people to think he ran off and started his own shit or was a dick or anything like that. No, I mean, I was, him, you know, he's, he's trying to probably do the things that maybe I should have done. You know, he's trying to you know capitalize on you know his fifteen minutes of fame, hopefully longer in the UFC, and you know brand himself a little bit. So that's really all it's about. It's not his own jiu-jitsu style of jiu-jitsu, it's just more of his brand of MMA, and it's just more of Thank a play you. off of his knee, you know, so that's all That's I important to know. I appreciate that. Yeah. It wasn't a shit start so, either. I yeah, that's pretty much it, you know, and, yeah, no, I mean, Miles gives me a lot of props, you know, I trained Miles from the time he was 12 years old until he was 20 years old, and, you know, he's, you know, he, he's not perfect, none of us are, but, you know, he's done pretty well by me to, to give me props, you know, and he's another, you know, he's one that we talked about earlier, you know, losing him broke my heart a little bit, but at the same time, you know, I can't really, I don't want to hold the kid back, you know, so he had to do what he had to do, you know, so, um, but, you know, he's like my little brother, so you'll never hear me say a negative thing about him at all ever, so. No, no, not at all, and I was that. hope I'm really yeah. glad that, that you didn't take me that way. I'm sorry. It was funny because, right. you know, honestly, I was wondering that. I, I saw that, and I was like, wait a minute now. Is this guy going Hollywood or shitty or something? Because he, he was real humble in the interview. <laughs> no, it's not. You know? You know, he can't fault the kid for trying to capitalize, you know, and, and trying to set himself up for the future. You know, Miles someday will be, I hope, a very, you know, I, I have confidence in him. He'll be a very, very, very good coach if that's the avenue that he pursues. You know, he's a... Uh, you know, he came up the right way, you know, through through me, through Warrior Way, through James, you know. He, he, you know, Miles, someday when he hangs up the gloves and he wants to pursue a career in, in coaching, I think he'll, he'll do really well at that. And I think he's just kind of using that to, to set that up, you know, as a possibility when he's done fighting. So that's really how that that's is. That's excellent. Now, James. Let me ask uh, you. Totally I want to ask, um, I, I ask, I want to ask Don a question. Go ahead. Don, I mean, Obviously, you're no fucking Marcelo Garcia, okay? But in regards to being a top-level black belt in jiu-jitsu form of instruction, would you not rank yourself up uh, up there, I mean, as a, as a legitimate top-level black belt instructor? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, James. You broke up a little bit there. Would you not? I, I mean, I understand you're not Marcelo Garcia, okay, or Hodger Gracie. Yeah. But... Would you not consider yourself a top level black belt instructor in jiu-jitsu? And there's really not too much anybody on the earth is going to teach someone more than you. Right. With all humility, I really would like to believe that I'm up there among the top instructors in the country. I mean, I know okay. some guys okay. that are, uh, you know, there's a lot going on here in Michigan. You know, I've had influence on a lot of people and um you know it just like we can say about mma you know the top fighters and ufc fighters all kind of have an avenue through us the same thing with the top jiu-jitsu guys they either have an avenue through me alone and then went on to train other places or have an avenue through not only me but warrior way and some other guys that went on to other places and before and after have been very successful in sport jiu-jitsu and, you know, my guys have been very successful in MMA. Um, so I've had a lot of successes as a coach in sport jiu-jitsu and in MMA. And, you know, I think my brand, my style, the way I teach jiu-jitsu um, could, it could rival anybody's. You know, I think if you wanted to learn jiu-jitsu from me, you're getting some of the best training available anywhere in the world. I mean, 
and that's just with all all humility. And I don't really don't like talking about myself, you know. But at some time, well, man, you know, I, nobody I, else. I, I say, say it. it. I gotta say it. Well, I set you up for it, so you're not talking about yourself. I asked you a fucking <laughs> yeah. question. Well, you know, there's, you know, no, way, there's no way around it. And I don't um, want to be that guy, you know. And, you know, it just okay, goes that, against what I what I'm about, I guess. Well, but you know, at some point, you got to say, "Hey, man, you know what? I'll put my jujitsu up against anybody else's in the world." You know. Okay. So, let, let, let me finish this point here. With Métis, are yeah, you going to find a better? I, I mean, would you not say Métis is you know arguably one of the best Muay Thai coaches in the world? There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Okay. And the proof okay. is in the pudding, not only in his coaching, but also in his ability himself as a fighter. You know? Absolutely. And I like to think that people will think the same thing about me, you know, and with all the injuries that I've had, I mean, catastrophic injuries that I've had, I think I've still done a lot in sports jiu-jitsu. You know, and I think had I not That's been an it. MMA fighter and I just focused on jiu-jitsu, I might have been one of the first Americans or the only Americans to win the jiu-jitsu worlds. You know what I mean? At the adult level. You know? Okay. I think it's very possible if I had just focused on jiu-jitsu alone. 